welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, today we're going to do an overview of September. I'm recording this on the 25th of August. I thought I'd just make mention of that because tomorrow we've got the full moon. I doubt I'll be able to upload this tonight, uh, but I should be able to upload this tomorrow on the full moon. Uh, speaking of the full moon that we have in Satyabhishak Nakshatra, has this been a big full moon for you? That's my question. Feel free to say what's been going on in your life within the last week. Uh, in particular, the last week, so say from the 20th of August onwards, how has this week been for you? Now, has anyone else been feeling that the energy has been intense or overwhelming or there's too much going on? Um, the other questions I would have are, you know, have you experienced a shift of any kind? Have you had a healing of any kind? Um, what else? And I'm asking all these questions on the basis of conversations I've had with people in my life, conversations I've had with clients, conversations I've had with um, one of my friends who was a bit of a coach to me, who now we're friends. So she doesn't coach me anymore, but um, I had a good chat with her this, this, uh, this evening on Skype. And she was saying that she had a healing and a clearing happen for her in the past week. I've noticed for me that the last week, ever since about 20th August onwards, it has just been this extreme crescendo of the illumination of darkness. And I've had to battle some things. And um, I can tell you, I've come out on top. I feel great. Uh, I don't have any problems now. But I definitely was having to deal with some very unpleasant energies uh, that were kind of manifesting themselves in different ways and kept coming at me. And I'm thinking, I've been having a look at what's going on and I really think it's to do with this full moon tomorrow. I think that the full moon in Satyabhishak Nakshatra, which is the hundred physicians to the gods, uh, you know, the hundred healers, you know, it's it's this kind of, within that nakshatra, there's also this thing of battling light and dark, battling demons, battling um, problematic energies. And it's a very spiritual nakshatra. And yeah, I mean, I've truly felt it, it kind of illuminate some things that I really thought, come on now, that's that's been dealt with. I've, I've dealt with that. I've dealt with that a million times. Come on. That's got to be the end. And then you go, no, there's more. Okay. Uh, so feel free to share if you've had a tough week too, because uh, I've heard many people having a tough week and, uh, and specifically just the last week. I know when I did my overview for August, I would have recorded it at the end of July. And I, I'm pretty sure I said that there's not much going to be happening in the month of August. Uh, that, I think that's kind of been true for the first three weeks of August. It was very quiet, but this last week has been extraordinary. And I'll just jot down some of the things that have been in the news, for example, um, in the past week. So Australian Parliament has been absolutely turned upside down. It's in turmoil, chaos, pandemonium. It's all going on. Uh, in the space of three days, they've tossed out the current Prime Minister and they've got a new one. Uh, this is not a person who's been elected by the public and uh, it's been a really interesting time. I actually investigated that astrologically today uh, and I can touch on that in a bit. Uh, what else has been going on? Floods in India. There's been severe flooding in India. A hurricane in Hawaii, really big hurricane in Hawaii, Category 5 or something like that, something major. Um, heat wave of Europe. I mean that has been a bit of an extended sort of a thing. Uh, I've got a note here that I think some of these things, well, oh no, I also got a note, Omarosa in the USA, <laughs> um, that is kind of tabloid news, I, I know, but still, it came up on my YouTube and I'm like, okay, let's click on that, let's watch that. Uh, and to me, the Omarosa thing in the USA and the, and the Australian Parliament, actually, I'm kind of thinking both of those are more of this Mars-Ketu conjunction. 
uh, because the Mars K2 conjunction, you know, in Australian Parliament, it's kind of a, a backstabbing sort of situation where um, where I believe it's been, you know, a leadership contest, whoever it was, and I don't remember the name. I've, I've only just heard this news, really. Um, they would have got the numbers in the Parliament and they decided, yeah, we'll, we'll take over. It just it feels a bit Mars Ketu to me. Omarosa in the USA, again, that could be Mars Ketu. It's definitely Mars energy. That one feels more Mars Rahu, but uh, anyway. So I've been looking at the news. I've been kind of, I've been looking at my own life, seeing the madness I've been dealing with, talking to friends, talking to clients, talking to people, hearing that everybody's gone through some shift or something weird or something full on this last week been incredible so I've been thinking about this astrologically I do think it might have something to do with full moon in Sattva Bishak illuminating you know perhaps the sludge that we didn't know was there uh, eclipse season is done yeah also we're coming out of eclipse season we're finished with the eclipses now that ended in August basically I think it's early August and I've got a note here that you know, it's a bit like Sardisati. It's a bit like, you know, when, when you've got the moon and, and Saturn's coming up to the moon in the 12th house, he's on the moon, then he's coming out over the second, first and second house. You know, that lead up is always physically, you're kind of bracing yourself. You're like, mm. it happens. And then uh, it's kind of like that release that release energy and I feel like maybe we're going through some release energy uh, and maybe some of all of these things you know crescendoing and then this release happening I'm not 100% sure but it's been very strange uh, so sometimes I'm able to you know very clearly see what's going on astrologically but this time it's not so easy I've got Malcolm Turnbull's chart up here who is the ex-prime minister of Australia uh, we don't have his time but everything else in here is is quite good and, and reliable uh, in terms of everything else I have in terms of place of birth date year all that kind of thing just the time I don't have so I put his moon as the ascendant so I'm reading from the moon. And this is definitely a prime minister's chart, if ever there was one. Mars exalted in Capricorn, sitting there in the fifth house. Leo, the kingdom, king, rulership. It's so beautiful. I mean, there's such poetry here. There's Rahu in the fourth, um, which is that he gets to the top of his domain in his country, in his land, in his mother country. Um or that he pursues that at any rate. Uh, we've got Jupiter there, networker, Jupiter exalted in Cancer. I mean, it's just a terrific chart. It's just, wow, it's it's a really great chart. It, oddly enough, his son is debilitated, which is strange, but it's it's in the second house. Everything else is just stunning, though. It's a really, really, really great chart. Uh, so why did I look him up? Yeah, I looked him up to see if I could figure out, to see if I could see, okay, what's going on with the stars? What's going on to have made this man fall from such a height? And unexpectedly so. Could this be seen? Now, I would love to have his ascendant. I don't know if having the ascendant would help because I always do read transits from the moon. Uh, I'm kind of thinking it's his Mars. Let's have a look at this. I think it's his Mars kind of, I think problems would have been brewing as early as May and it's his Mars on his natal Mars there. I think that's where the problems are coming from, as well as Saturn being on his natal Rahu. I do think, I had a look at the Dashas, Antha Dashas, all this kind of thing, couldn't particularly pinpoint anything there. Um, the other thing I looked at was what could be going on. There was this kind of backstabbing situation in Australian politics before. I had a look at Julia Gillard's chart. I had a look at, I had a, look at a few things. Uh, again, nothing, I couldn't particularly dig out any very obvious thing that if like, if say for example, 
I didn't know what had happened, could I just, by looking at the chart, say, oh, yeah, this man would definitely lose his job? No, I, I couldn't say that for sure. Uh, on post-analysis, I am able to see, okay, yeah, it could be his Mars, but, yeah, it's been a tough thing to figure out astrologically. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, yeah, I didn't want this overview to be too long. I wanted it to be quite quick, actually, because uh, I know that you probably quite like to watch your little mini reading. Uh, this time in the mini readings, I have done something a bit new and innovative, so click on your mini reading to find out what that is. Uh, each time I'll try and vary it a little bit just to just to keep it fresh and interesting so there'll always be some structure that's the same you know some some routine and some structure that's the same so that you know I always think that structure is a good thing but then it's good to just add some variety and do something a little bit different each time as I can um, so yeah eclipse season is done I really think that now from now until well, I don't know till the end of the year, but definitely the next couple of months, I think the energy is going to calm down a bit. And especially after this full moon in Sattva Bishak, it feels like um, this is a big full moon. This has been a really big full moon. Uh, let's have a look. Eclipse season is done. October 6th, Venus goes... Retrograde. Okay, so in everyone's little monthly mini readings, I have been talking about Venus and how she's going to stay for a really, really long time in the same house, right? Now, sign-wise, she's going to stay in Libra. I had another look. Um, I clicked through every single day of it, and it's actually a really long time. I think in the mini reading, I make it sound like Venus is there till mid-November, but it's actually far longer. It's just the retrograde that ends mid-November. So I apologize if I, if you watch the mini reading and you think, oh, mid-November she leaves. No, no, she doesn't. She doesn't leave. Um, she just starts going forward. So that's why I do these monthly overviews, the big months, so that we can have a look at some of these long-ranging things. Here are the exact dates: October six. So I think it's September the second. She goes into Libra. October 6th, so she stays for a long, long time. October 6th, she goes retrograde, so she's still in Libra. Then she goes forward, I think it's like November 16th, she's still in Libra. And guess what? She stays in Libra until 1st of January 2019. So basically, Venus is in the same spot until the start of the year. Now, I have got my fingers crossed and I wish that she's in a great spot for you. If she's in a great spot, you're very, very lucky because you can keep enjoying that energy the whole time. If she's in a not so great spot, you know, a place like the sixth house where she's debilitated, all that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be a time of mastery <laughs> you know um, you'll be able to master some form of um, some form of you know I don't know I've kind of lost the words some form of like spiritual skill of detachment or over overcoming things or going beyond things or I suppose getting above things and not getting embroiled in things, you know, it's you'll you'll discover some form of mastery. So um, that's the positive there. We've got a new moon in Purva Falguni Leo on September the 9th, and then the full moon in Uttara Bhadrapada Pisces on September the 24th. Now I'm kind of trying to tune into this full moon on September the 24th. I can't particularly feel what to say around that but I can definitely talk about this new moon in Purva Falguni Leo September 9th fantastic guys I think we've earned this I think this is our treat time um, considering all that's gone before you know I think we're, we're all coming out of a big difficult period and, and it's been many months of a big difficult period this is not just the last week I think this is kind of the exhaustion of the last few months. And Purva Falguni, the nakshatra is... Now, some people will say it's the hammock. Some people will say it's a bed and a fireplace. 
Um, but it's definitely about relaxation, rest. I think it's even the marital bed. So, you know, um, things to enjoy in that regard, uh, whatever it is. I mean, look, basically, this is just a good time of, of rest and relaxation. I really think that. And I think that what we can do on September 9th is you know, this is what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to carve out some time. I want to get a big sketchbook. Uh, I've got one up there on my shelf. Um, big sketchbook, no lines. I love sketchbooks without lines. I can't stand it when it's got lines in it. Um, pen, and it's just time to dream. And write down your goals. Write down what you want to create. And specifically, because this is Leo, specifically, be writing down how you want to expand your kingdom or queendom, however you want to look at that. Um, what plans do you want to start initiating? What, what, how do you want to expand going forward? How do you want to grow your little empire, you know, um, or the, the mini economy that you run or however you view your life, you know, see it as if you are CEO in charge of a company or you're a king in charge of a kingdom or you're queen in charge of a queendom, right? And, you know, so you do a job, you have money coming in, but you pay bills and you pay, you're a mini economy. Do you know what I mean? Without you, so many other things won't happen. So many other people go without and, you know, uh, everybody's vital to the whole. So see yourself as being in charge of, um, of, of, of a kingdom, even if it's a small life. I know for me, when, I've, um, when, I, when I have and am still going through kind of uh, a tight financial squeeze, for example, I don't see it as, as oh, I have to be on a budget or something. You know, in, in treasury and in governments, they talk about, um, what do they say? They say, oh, we're implementing austerity measures. How cool is that? You know, I say to myself, well, I must implement austerity measures. I'm having a bit of a tight month or whatever. You know, see yourself as being in charge of a, a kingdom and write down how you want to expand that kingdom. What do you want to do? You know, what would you like to do? What do you want to create? Would you like to move? Do you want to buy a car? Um, you know, do you want to start a business? Do you want to start a new social media channel? Do you want to, like, start Instagram or something or start, you know, um, how do you want to expand going forward? And write down some of those dreams. And it's not just business, it's personal as well. You know, do you want to meet new friends who are of more like mine to you? Do you want to spend more time with your family? Do you want to travel more? Um, what pilgrimages do you want to do? What places, faraway places do you want to travel to? I think this is this September 9th, they always talk about on a new moon, it's a good time to plant seeds. It's a good time to you know, really think about what it is that you want to grow and nourish and nurture. So that's what I wish for you. I wish that you get some time on September the 9th to preferably lounge about, lounge about or lie down on a couch or, or on your bed, get comfy, get some kind of scribble paper and a pen and dream big. So that's what I'm seeing for September the 9th. I think September's going to be a great month, actually. Uh, I don't see it as being anything too, too crazy. Let's hope not. Um, how long have I been talking? Oh, 19 minutes. The camera is definitely going to pack up. So, uh, <laughs> so I should probably stop chatting as well. But um, I hope you enjoy the little mini readings. And apologies for my Venus uh, thing. I think I say that Venus stays till November, mid-November, but I don't mean she stays till mid-November. I mean, she's just retrograde till mid-November. She's going to be in that spot till the rest of the year. Okay, so that's why it's good to have these big monthly overviews. I think that's all I've got time to cover, guys, but... Um, 
take care, have a good month, and I hope to create as many videos as I can this month as I hope to do every month. So please stay tuned. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Give it a thumbs up. It always makes my day. And I really want to thank you so much for watching. It just, seriously, this channel, it gives me so much joy. And every couple of days when I log on and I see that there's been more growth, I'm just, I'm just so happy, you know. And I, I just want to keep doing this. So fingers crossed that I can keep doing this. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. And I'll see you next time.